In this video, I will show you how to convert a Polaroid radiographic film holder into a Polaroid 8106 film holder, allowing you to use it for uh, regular 8x10 instant films. Uh, but to get started here, I've already removed uh, the 13 Phillips screws from the, uh, the face here. So you just lift this off. And there's uh, your radiographic hardware inside. This is uh, your plastic frame uh, as is. So uh, now what we need to do is remove all the superfluous radiographic hardware, which uh, is this little spring here, these side bars. This uh, top of this dark slide, I guess you want to call it. We'll need to, uh, don't lose these, these items. We'll have to use them again later. There's two of each, so we'll put these over here. That's another one. And uh, to release this further, we need to remove these hooks. Again, to save those. So up here. Now we can lift this off. So what we got to do here is, um, this is the radiographic, uh, we got to peel this apart. Got some uh, double stick tape in here, keeping it together. Don't destroy this because we'll need it. We'll need it to use it later for uh, making light seals. So keep this, uh, and we can get rid of get rid of this. Uh, no, no longer have a need for that. So uh, while we're here, uh, what you want to do is you want to make sure your frame is straight. This is a metal frame. You can see mine's a little bent. So uh, if the, if the frame is warped. It will uh, cause light leaks in your holder, so you just kind of flex it back to uh, make sure it's straight. So, you'll and then we have this is uh, the base here. So I'll tell you what uh, what we need to do to each one of these parts to make them light proof. And compatible here. Uh, on this cover here, the uh, the sides are too tall for a dark slide, so we need to cut them down. What I ended up doing is I uh, scored it with a compass and then used a razor blade to slice over and over again to uh, get it down to the correct dimensions. Uh, you'll need to remove these plastic nubs. We don't need those anymore. You just shave them down with a razor blade. So I will uh, show you what it's supposed to look like here on a finished one. So for comparison, the, uh, the shave down the sides a little bit. So this is the tall side and this uh, shaved down um, on both sides. And uh, when you do that though, you'll notice the, from the radiographic uh, hardware, there's openings right here. We'll have to fill those in with, uh, with epoxy putty. You see the epoxy putty there, all four of them there. Um, and that's all the uh, modification you actually, actually have to do the plastic of this top part. What we'll have to do though is add light seals now to that part. Uh, and what I did is I fabricated this using the leftover parts from the uh, 
this radiographic absorbing bit here. I cut it down, slice this off and save this for later, that velvet part. And then uh, use this black plastic to uh, cut an appropriately sized piece for a light baffle there. Uh, and I created one, another one out of another piece. I stuck some adhesive velvet to the black plastic and cut it to fit. So uh, we have uh, two kind of two baffles here with light absorbing velvet. Those are stuck on there. Also I'd added an additional light seal down here to absorb any light that came in from uh, the dark side face there, dark slide area. So I have a light seal at the top and at the bottom, and then the epoxy on the sides. That's done with that. To the, uh, the frame itself, you can see uh, all right now it's just bare metal. I, um, you have to, uh, Add some light seals here. Uh, the one we sliced off from this here, the top, slice that off. I put adhesive tape right along underneath this velvet strip on the opposite side and stuck it to the frame here. You can see. And then at the top, I used my adhesive velvet to wrap around the top of the frame onto the back where I made another light baffle out of this black plastic sheet. So it's stuck onto this baffle to make another light trap there. Additionally, with using these uh, the Fidelity dark slides, you will have to add, uh, since the diameter of the dark slide the width is too narrow, it'll let light in the sides because of the side to side movement. Uh, you have to add thin strips, these are two millimeter strips of velvet cut on there. I tucked them underneath this baffle so that when the dark side slides in it doesn't snag them up and peel them down. And on the back side I added this velvet there. So that's how uh, to uh, light proof the frame. And uh, on this back part, depending on the condition of your holder, these, you know, these are getting kind of pushing uh, their age here. But um, I was having issues with light leakage underneath the sides here because of the dry rotting foam. This foam here, you can see it, it's, it's bro peeling apart and broken. It's, it's dry rotted and it's that sticky, nasty foam. Um, so what you have to do is gently peel this off. You don't want to warp or crease it. But you peel, peel this off here, over here. you to access this foam because it's, it's crumbling apart um, but you can as a front and a back part there's as adhesive on either side and you can get under the adhesive and just peel it off in one piece and that's the cleanest way to do it peel it on either side uh, and once you have that removed you can cut to fit this uh, it's foam to replace it here. I know it's not double-sided, but it doesn't really need to be because it's thicker than this. Uh, and since it has a memory, when you close the holder, it'll press in on it. And uh, it helps to fill any light leaks there. So you'll need to fill it in all along here. When you're done with that side, do the same on the other side. Uh, this foam is a little deeper in. Um, so you peel that both sides off 
stick it in with uh, new foam on that side. So you'll want to add uh, velvet on the top and the bottom of the back here to uh, help with any light leaks. So now I'll show you how to reassemble it because there's a bit of a trick involved. Uh, so we got uh, all the pieces, finished pieces, what we have here. Uh, we take the metal frame and we lay it uh, with these, you see the metal ears sticking up. We uh, put those underneath the pins here on the back of the frame. Stick them under the pins set it down to rest you'll see these holes notches come through the holes there uh, and we grab the little hooks here you know facing towards the center of the holder put some tension on this place the hook in the groove and slide it inward uh, see so it uh, grabs the the back and it holds it down we'll do it up here as well and facing towards the center of the holder. And now you see it, it uh, the frame is actually held in to the, uh, by the pins and the hooks. So move this to the side. And then uh, we take this part. We had our blue buttons the holes here like so and uh, that's where we get our springs you want the you want the springs here to have this little flared up piece on them you want the flared up piece sticking upwards and opening towards the middle so right here this notch right below the buttons or there, one on the other side, and this one facing, opening towards the in, inner, inside of the holder there, the middle of the holder. So we use gravity to keep these, these parts in position. And uh, now we take this back part with our uh, hinge pins I'll put those in first. You have to lay it down just straight on, but uh, engage the rear first. So engage the pins at the back first. And then you want your clamps close by. So maybe one on either side there. But once those are fully engaged, we had to push down on the front, the opening, the door part, and uh, keep constant tension. Otherwise, the springs will pop the, the hooks off. So push down constant tension on that and get a clamp on there on either end We're about approximately where the buttons are. So we got them clamped on like this. Now we test, uh, slide them over, test for springy, spring tension. Yep, we got it on there. Slide this guy over. There we go, spring tension on both. So now we know that our, uh, our door latches will work properly. Uh, and now that's engaged, you can uh, add all the screws back to the, uh, the holder, to the frame, keep it all together. And once the screws are in, you can take the clamps out and uh, just add your dark slide. So there you go. I converted Polaroid 810 six essentially now and this is where our gaffer's tape comes in uh, at the end if you like to cover up the rivets to prevent uh, wear of these rivets uh, chewing into your camera frame so well there you have it uh, please uh, if you have questions leave them uh, in the comments below the video and I will answer them for you also uh, if you're in the process of doing this and you find materials that uh, work better than the ones I've used, please post them below. We can uh, collectively share our knowledge, uh, have more people shooting uh, instant 8x10. It's a lot of fun. Thanks for watching and uh, happy shooting.